Good evening, everybody. This is Rob and Jordan, and we are back for Archangel Inc. Live number 48. Hi, Jordan. How are you tonight? I am great, Rob. How are you doing? <laughs> I am good. I am good. It's nice to be here. Glad, uh, glad to be discussing another topic for this week's event. Um, tonight, we are going to be talking about whether it is still worth it to publish on KDP, on Amazon, as a self-publisher in 2020. So any initial thoughts on, on this, Jordan? Well, first, I thought it was good to mention, you know, we're on 48. That's like 11 months, right? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. We're at, it first, is. We're, yeah, yeah. we're at 48 weeks. That's awesome. We keep trying to dig into stuff. So if you're a new new person out there listening to us, or if you come up or you discover us later on, definitely just connect with us. We'd love to answer any questions you have. Uh, hopefully, we'll be answering some questions maybe you didn't even know you had uh, tonight. We love to do that, too. But yeah, happy to continue to to do these as much as we can, stay up to date on current you know, topics all around Amazon, self-publishing, publishing, all of that stuff. So uh, I'm excited for this one too. I don't have any initial notes, uh, but yeah, if we wanted to just dive into it, I'm ready. Cool, perfect. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, so the main the main topic, the answer to the question uh, for the uh, too long didn't watch uh, audience is yes, <laughs> um, it is still worth it. And what we want to talk about is why self-publishing is still worth it in 2020, even if the gold rush is over. So my initial thought on that is uh, I just wanted to touch on this idea of the gold rush. And sometimes you may hear this if you're in the publishing community or self-publishing community, this idea of the, the Amazon gold rush or the Kindle gold rush when things opened up when you were allowed to allow, when access was, was offered to the public to make books available. A lot of people put books up there and saw them do really well. They didn't necessarily have to have everything really optimized and, and as tight as possible, but there was a quote unquote gold rush here where I think the novelty in some, uh, in some ways of having a book available for immediate download made it so that people were buying in, in relatively high numbers and also the competition was a lot lower. So uh, it is, there were fewer, there were more opportunities for, uh, for fewer books to do well. Uh, that's changed over time. And now it's, you know, the number one place in the world to buy books. And a lot of those books are going to be self-published because of the platform they have set up. So competition is going to be higher and it's not as simple as it was, you know, eight or 10 years ago, you just put something up and kind of sit back and collect a royalty check. Uh, however, it is still valuable. There are still opportunities here. And so we want to talk a little bit about that, compare and contrast, uh, the uh, self-publishing on Kindle uh, platform with uh, traditional publishing, and then also just kind of the big picture of why you might consider publishing to begin with. If you're an author already, or if you're not yet an author, but you kind of have a business and you're looking to establish yourself, uh, there might be some reasons to talk about all of that. Uh, thoughts on, on any of those thoughts, Jordan? Uh, the only thing I wanted to ana add uh, initially is just you know the idea that, hey, I'm writing my next book, I'm still doing this. There are still authors out there that are still publishing. You know, we find it worth it, uh, and there's there's plenty of people that do find it worth it to still publish books. So, not that it's just because hey, I do it, so you should do it, but just the idea that you know the the self publishing group groups that we're involved in are still highly active, I and mean, there's still a little, still a lot of people talking about this subject, putting books out there, uh, and there's always going to be mixed levels of, of success, you know, across different genres and across different authors and with whatever you're doing. Um, but I just wanted to add that note in there, you know, I, Hey, I'm writing my book right now. I'm at 16,000 words, super excited just to get, you know, even if it's terrible, you know, like we said, like we've said in other videos, get the first draft done. Doesn't matter how bad it is. My first drafts are always terrible, but it helps me keep moving forward. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to put my next one out there and keep rolling. Uh, so yeah. So let that be a little encouragement to you. If you're thinking about publishing or if you're writing your book and you're like, oh man, it's 2020. Everything's changed. There's going to be even more competition. Doesn't it? Doesn't mean you can't still find success. Yeah, it's there's something I was reminded of, and I think it was a uh, repeated as a line in the <laughs> office. You know, I wish somebody would tell us when the good old days are right now. And you know, it looks like maybe five or ten years ago were the good old days compared in some ways to what we're experiencing now. But in another five or ten or twenty years, we might say, "Oh my gosh, why didn't I get involved in Amazon self-publishing in 2020?" There are lots of opportunities that we have lots of resources at our disposal. And so, you know, we kind of just want to discuss a handful of those and and ways that you can take advantage of them. Uh, the big picture, again, for me is know what you're getting into. Know, have some uh, sense of expectation of what 
success would constitute for you. And once you've established that, it's easier to determine, okay, yes, this is a, a calculated risk that I can take and something that I'd like to move forward with, or, hey, maybe it really isn't a, a good fit for you at this time. Maybe it will be in a few years from now. Uh, maybe maybe something else is a, a better fit for you altogether. But uh, but yeah, just having a good sense of what, what you're getting yourself into, I think can be really helpful in determining whether or not this is going to be worth it for you. Yeah. And I think honestly, we're still in that. I think, you know, just personally that we're still in that middle field. I think while self-publishing on, on Amazon and all those, other, all those other things is still easy, it's very easy to do. It's not easy to do it well. And I think that's the big difference there. Uh, you have, you know, you can either get help, you can learn a lot of this stuff yourself, but it's not as easy as just clicking a button uh, and hoping people uh, will come to that. So we're not, we're not in that phase, but if you put some work in, and elevate yourself, you know, there's still, there's still access for you, I think. Yeah, no, great point. Great point. So let's start going through some of these uh, so, notes. We have first one, building your platform. So what does that mean, Jordan? I, what's a platform? Why do I build it? What does it matter? Uh, I think you know, when you're thinking business in general, uh, you're starting to get out for yourself and you want, maybe you first want to make some money and help people and all those nice things. Uh, really, if you want to make a, if you want to find success online, it starts with building a platform for yourself. I mean, that's the thing you'll hear. You'll hear people over and over say that maybe in different ways, grow your audience, uh, you know, build your following, build your platform, things like that. I'll, I'll kind of go hand in hand and are interchangeable. Uh, but really, it's just like finding the people that you, your message and what you have to say is going to impact. Uh, finding the people that are going to say, hey, well, I really like Jordan's writing here. This actually really, this really helped me in this specific way. Uh, this made a difference in my life. You know, I'm going to continue to to read uh, books of his. I'm going to take his courses. I'm going to do all that stuff because I'm building a platform and um, you know, having it having it as a base of just pe bringing people to me. So I think pat platform includes everything. It includes maybe your blog. It includes social media. It includes everything that you do. I think in an online space, but it also it could potentially be locally. Uh, as well, really, just the platform is getting getting your name out and having people. Uh, you know, follow you, get to know you, follow, take part in any of your stuff. To me, that's what a platform looks like. Yeah, I, I think that's a great uh, summary. Uh, I, I think about platform is uh, all of the sum total, like you said, of all the work that you've done. And uh, when you're when you're putting a book out, you know, again, this topic is should I self publish? You can build your platform. You can access one of the biggest marketplaces in the world through self-publishing. If you have a book out there, whether you're an author exclusively or a business person with um, an, an authorship component to it, you can access a lot of people that you wouldn't otherwise because they're on this, uh, this channel, this distribution network, uh, this commercial marketplace. And building your platform through that is going to be potentially easier if you strategize it, uh, and, and utilize it well than trying to get people to come over to your own individual website or your own brick and mortar store. It's just a way to kind of expand the the options that you have for finding your followers, your your fans, the people who love and support what you want to do. Yeah, I think it's just think about um, you know utilizing those marketplaces to just expand your reach and your network, especially as you're if you're starting out and growing your audience, it's going to be harder to bring people right to your website and sell them a book, especially if you have to deal with, you know, Bank, bank transfers, PayPal, all of that stuff. I mean, that could be hard for someone that's first starting out. If you can just use utilize Amazon, you know, you're using their network, using their payment platform. There's that trust there already. Mm -hmm. uh, so just think of think of it in terms of just utilizing um, utilizing those platforms to enhance your own. Yeah, great. Uh, next comment here: Books build credibility, trust, and authority. <clears throat> so this is something that we talk about fairly frequently, and uh, I won't, have, I won't comment too much about it, but if you have a book out there, you can be literally the person who wrote the book on this topic. Somebody who's maybe on the fence about doing business with you in some other capacity, they can say, well, hey, they, here's, here's a book. It's a relatively low risk way to get to know them. Maybe it costs three bucks or 10 bucks or 20 bucks, but uh, it helps me understand where they're coming from and makes it that much easier if they have a good sensibility from what you've written to invest in you or work with you in a uh, deeper, more meaningful capacity, you know, and uh, in a more um, significant financial capacity as well. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I've seen it in, for me personally, and I think it can just, just be huge for getting people to have that 
more trust in you, especially again, if you're starting out and maybe you're, you're brand new in it, you know, I'm going to, Hey, I'm going to do a ton of research. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to share my experience that just gives you an automatic, not an automatic. It gives you a lot of work to do, uh, but it gives you a leg up there. Uh, that right. could be, that can be beneficial and impactful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and related, and I'm not sure if we're going to uh, kind of touch on these on, on some of the other ones, but it can be really helpful as a summary for you as well as a, as mm -hmm. an author, even if you don't sell a whole lot of copies of your book. If you're a business person, if you're gathering and consolidating your expertise, people often say the best way to uh, ensure that you have learned something is to teach it. So when you're putting the, your book together, it's a way for you to kind of remember all of the, the different threads that maybe you've put together and, and help you kind of get more clear about either what your purpose is as a business or, you know, what you've learned and accomplished in the course of getting involved in a particular field. So, um, you know, again, that's that sort of uh, authority building element. Yep. Good stuff. Awesome. Uh, another reason why self-publishing is still worth it in 2020, uh, your story is worth telling and self-publishing gives you the reins to get it out there. Thoughts on that, Jordan? No, I just think, I mean, that, that maybe that's a more sentimental reason, but I, I still think it's a valuable one, especially if you've gone through something or, you know, if you have, you have, if you have some story that can impact someone else, I think uh, for me, it's worth it, even if it changes one person's life. Right. So it just depends on what your, what your uh, success metrics are going to be and what you really want to do. I think books are still wildly impactful. Uh, you know, you could write it up in a free blog, but I think there's just something that is more powerful about a long form book that someone can sit down and read. Uh, again, it, there's just that credibility factor. You know, if it's a super long blog post versus a book that has a cover and all, you know, all the, all the stuff that combines to make something a book, uh, it just adds a little bit more weight to that. So it just, it just depends on how you want to get your, get your story out there. Uh, but you still have a story that's worth telling. Yeah, love it. And and the nice thing about a book too, when you actually create a, a print edition anyway, it's something tangible. You know, if you have a blog post, it's it's up online. Maybe you don't always have access to the internet, but if you have something printed out, it's in your hand, it's personal, and you can take it with you, you know, go out camping or, you know, go somewhere off grid and you still have it there. It's it's a legacy work uh, in a way. And that's that's got value, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Moving on you can still make money. Uh, how much will depend on several factors, including the genre, the timing of your book, the quality of it, the market need, uh, et cetera. But those are some of the elements to, you know, why self-publishing in 2020 might still be useful. Thoughts, thoughts on that, Jordan? No, I mean, I think that one is still self-explanatory. You know, there, there wouldn't be people doing it right now if there, there wasn't some level of, of success. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, we've, we've seen people have success and you, you see books jump up in, in the rankings, you know, are obviously selling. It's so hard to predict and nobody can truly predict when something's going to go viral, if it's going to hit at the right time. You know, a, a book on how to work from home, if you had just the perfect timing, could have done really well, you know, when during, you know, our pandemic and shutdown and everything. Uh, but maybe not. I mean, I noticed one on there the other day that seemed to be doing okay that was on that subject because I was curious. I was like, hey, maybe that's like a perfect timing kind of book. And yeah, it was doing okay. And, you know, maybe someone just got it out there and, uh, you know, hit the right timing and got lucky. And then there's books that you put out, that authors put out there, and I'm sure it went, went well beyond their wildest expectations and the book started to sell. So I think, you know, I think people are still buying books. I mean, it's, it's obvious you look on Amazon, there's books all over the place. It's just hard to get noticed and it's hard to be in that, but there is, there is, a, there is still potential there, you know, and you're not gonna have the potential, you know, it, I think it's different than the lottery, but the same things apply, you mm -hmm. know, if you're, you can't win if you don't play. So you need to at least put yourself out there and do everything that you can do and market yourself to the best of your ability, the best that you know how, and uh, give yourself a good chance. I, I know not to keep talking about that, Rob, but that's, I know that's something we share and talk about a lot is really just putting your best foot forward. And I know we we share that over and over again, but it's it's super important. That's the mantra I try to live by. You know, there's only so much you can do. You could you could do all the research, you could write the best book in the world, uh, with have you know, have the flashiest cover and get everything perfect. And then maybe the timing was off. Maybe just people weren't ready for it. And that's just that can happen and that's okay. Yeah, it reminds me of the expression, I think it's something like uh, luck, what we think of as luck is really a preparation 
with op uh, when preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can prepare and be ready for it and to take advantage when an opportunity comes up, uh, the luckier that you will end up being, you know, when it comes to this idea of, you know, still making money. Yeah, there there are lots of, of different factors that go into it. And, and there's some of them that you can predict beforehand. You can have a sense of, you know, what sort of genres are doing well. You can have a sense of, you know, whether your book is good quality or not, you can kind of prepare some of that and and move those odds in your favor a little bit. Uh, there is going to be an element of randomness to it. And uh, and that's okay. You know, again, the, the big picture for me, just kind of know what you're getting into before you make any major commitments or uh, major action and you know, have uh, good expectations or, or good uh, hopes, but, um, you know, have, have a sense of what your um, real realistic expectations might look like as well and uh, and make your choices accordingly so that you know this isn't something that is um, you know financially ruinous for something you know if you have your you you sell your house uh, give up your mortgage for a book yeah, on yeah. you know uh, under underwater you know seahorse raising or something and then it sold five books in all of that why is it always here. the seahorses it's always the seahorses uh, it is, you know because I don't know I don't know that's a good question sorry seahorses I don't mean to pick on you yeah but um, <laughs> but in any event uh, yeah you can still you can still make money doing this and like you said Jordan there's a reason that people are still publishing so uh, Part of that is the the financial opportunity that is here. Yeah, and the last thing I wanted to share with that because I know it, I know it's something that everyone thinks about. I mean, I, I I honestly think about it every time. Is this is this book worth it? Uh, for me, the answer to that question isn't necessarily just is this book itself going to go on and make a ton of money, but my more my my success metrics have become how is this going to help me build my platform? So again, we're talking about that. You know, if I sell a thousand books. Maybe that could get me like three, three to five, uh, you know, coaching clients, and I'm planning to do that eventually. So thinking, thinking of in terms like that, uh, maybe a thousand books, you can say, hey, that, ah, if I only sell a thousand books, you know, you're already doing way better than most people that publish a book. But maybe that's not going to be worth it to you. But if you have a deeper, uh, if you have a platform, if it's bringing people into the fold, maybe getting email list signups or anything like that, then it, then it starts to be okay. It's not just the book. It's building the platform. It can, you know, you can sell and help people in an even deeper one-on-one -on -one way potentially. So I think that's important to note there, because like, it really does tie in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Great point. Great point. Moving on, we've got the uh, expanded audience through Amazon and other platforms that you can't reach with just a blog or YouTube channel. We kind of touched on this a, a little yep. while ago. It's a little bit different having an actual book out there, but but even for people who have really established books or, or um, websites or YouTube channels. When somebody says, "Hey, I'm signed up. I'm a fan. You know, I like what you do. I've I'm subscribed. You know, I I share all of your videos. I'm doing everything I can on that uh, on that end. But how else can I support you? If you say, "Hey, well, I've got a book, and this is a way to uh, to to support me," then uh, that can be a really helpful addition to your business. Or uh, somebody who maybe does have a, a big YouTube channel or a big website following who puts their book out there and because of that website following that book does reasonably well raises up in the rankings you know gets uh, becomes more visible to people who've never encountered their website or, or youtube channel before uh, this can again just help to expand that that reach that you have and uh, build on your audience base yep absolutely cool all right so let's talk now about the pros and cons of using amazon specifically to self-publish Putting your book on a marketplace allows for a bigger reach, but Amazon is so big that you can uh, get lost in the noise. Uh, well, I'll fix that typo. Get, lo yeah. get lo <laughs> lows in the noise. Get lost in the noise. Yeah. Get, get uh, loose in the noise. <laughs> get loose in the noise. Yep. Shake it out. Um, yeah. All right. Thoughts on that, Jordan? Yeah. I mean, that that's a that's a big pro and con right there. And I, I, I do hear a lot of people talk about that. Okay. You know, Amazon is a marketplace, but you know, there is so much noise on there. Is it really going to stand out again? You, you know, you can't win if you don't play. So I think putting it out there, you know, I, th there's so much reach potential that it's always worth to, it's worth it to put your book uh, out there. You know, especially if you, if you don't go with uh, KDP select, you could still put your book on your website. You could offer your book along with an audio download or a video course or something like that and, and sell it as a package item. That's always an option. Uh, but choosing not to use Amazon for the most part, uh, and avoiding that reach, I don't, I don't suggest it. I think putting it out there and then seeing, you know, seeing, seeing how it, how it does, you never know. 
I think it's still worth the time because again, like if you already have, if you already have your book, you already have everything you need to publish it. You might as well, for me, you might as well just go and upload it on Amazon. And you do have to do a lot. You could potentially have to do other legwork such as keywords uh, and doing those types of things. Uh, but even if you do it dead wrong, it's still better to have it out there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest uh, element for me is there's a trust uh, there's a trust component that people have with Amazon. Most people have an Amazon account, and mm -hmm. they feel better about taking a chance on something that they haven't encountered before. If it's through Amazon, they know that they'll get their money back. There's not going to be fraud, or if there is, you know, some sort of credit card issue that they can follow up with a big company who's interested in their continued business versus uh, some potential fly by night you know, individual website that uh, maybe, maybe I feel good about this. Maybe I don't. Uh, I think that the um, availability and the trustworthiness that comes with having your book on a big platform like that can be really, uh, really helpful. Yeah. Everything, everything's built in and ready to go. Customers can just leave reviews on there. You can build your page and, you know, you can do that within their system. And it, again, it's like the legwork and thinking about uh, the details and the technical side of setting that up for yourself can, can, can be overwhelming. Uh, to some. Right. If you are dealing with international currency conversions and VAT taxes and, you know, technical support issues, if somebody has an issue getting it onto their device or downloading it, or maybe there's a limited number of downloads that they're afforded, but they accidentally use them all. I mean, there are all sorts of things that could be an issue that Amazon really uh, makes efficient from an author standpoint. You just don't have to think about any of that. And, and they uh, cover the cost of that with their their percentage of the royalties that they have, uh, that they earn. Yep, and it, I don't know if we have this later on, but what, when you said that, it made me think. You know, again, pro and con there. Pro, you have Amazon, and they handle all the customer service. But then the con there is when Amazon sells it, you don't get contact information of mm -hmm. people, and that could be a detriment to you as you're building your list, but also to the customer, I think, as well, because then there's mm -hmm. not that direct connection. And you know, some people are just going to unsubscribe from your lists, and that's fine. Uh, but just thinking about. You know, if you sell it on your own site, you get that person's information, you can start to build a relationship and have that contact uh, right away. And it, there's, it, again, it's always a pro and con because people are going to feel a little safer about that. Hey, I don't have to give my contact information out. All I have to do is purchase this book on Amazon, then get it. You know, I don't have to deal with people, authors or anyone that's going to be annoying, which I means some people out there, unfortunately, ruin it, you know, for others. Right. Uh, but so there's that. But just thinking about that as well. Yep. Agreed. All right, moving forward, it is free to publish, but again, yeah. the competition is high. So no no barrier to entry. If you have access to you know basic word processing software or you know anything else to create these files, then you can upload them. You don't have to chart. There's no uh, fee for it. You know other platforms like Ingram Spark, there is an initiation fee, a project fee that you have to pay. Amazon doesn't have anything like that, so you can put it out there. And if you wanted to totally bootstrap it, you can test the proof of concept, see if it has any traction, and uh, go from there. Otherwise, uh, you have reduced your um, financial outlay to essentially zero. And even if it's a big um, a big miss, it doesn't hit, land with the audience at all, then um, then you're not out any uh, investment in that respect. Yep. Cool. Another uh, element here, no publishing house gatekeeper. But again, if the gates are wide open, the competition goes up. So we'll talk a, a little bit about gatekeeping in the next section when we're going to discuss the uh, publishing house pros and cons. But uh, But the short of it is, you know, if you have an account and uh, you're able to, you're a legal resident in, you know, any of the countries that Amazon serves, then then you can have this out there. There's nothing stopping you. There's no one that's saying, hey, sorry, you're not allowed to do that. Uh, again, as long as your account is in good standing, then you don't have to convince anybody else that your title is publish worthy. Yeah. And I, again, pro and con because, you know, anyone can get in. So you can get in, but you can put most, uh, even if the content wasn't great, you know, you could throw up a cover. You could throw a 10,000 word, or whatever the, I can't remember what the limit, they may have a character limit in there that you have to hit. I think, I think they do. I can't remember off the top of my head, mm -hmm. but if you hit the very low character limit, put a cover up there, you know, you can put an, just another book uh, out there. And that that's interesting because yeah, I mean, there's just so many books that get published every day mm -hmm. that even if you are putting all the time and effort, you can still potentially get lost in the noise of those other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's, that's the tough give and take there. Right, right. Which again, like we mentioned earlier, distinguishing yourself uh, through uh, quality measures, through research and making sure that your uh, topic is of interest, that you have an audience, all of those things will, will definitely help to um, 
allow you not to get lost in the noise and stand out a bit and and distinguish yourself. Yeah, and the only thing I'll add to that one, that right there, Rob, is that Amazon is so it, it's continuing to grow. It's like Google in that way. They're continuing to try to get it so that the cream does rise to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they want. I mean, they want quality books because they want the customer to be happy if you're thinking about that. Right. So, I mean, I, again, we don't have that as a reason to do self-publishing in 2020, but I do think that's super important mm -hmm. uh, that Amazon is constantly adjusting their algorithms. They want to see their books uh, have sales. There's less and less ways to game the system because Amazon's just too smart for that. Uh, I'm sure there are still ways that I don't even know about that people right. still do and get away with. And, you know, they keep it very tight. They keep very tight lipped about that. But for the most part, if your book is really good, you have a better chance of Amazon saying, hey, I'm going to bump this up because I want the money too. I want the sales. <laughs> right, right. Yep, I agree. Uh, moving on. When you self-publish, you have control over design, pricing, editing, et cetera. But that also means that you have to foot the bill entirely. So whether you're doing it yourself or hiring a firm like Archangel Inc. or you know uh, individual freelancers to do different aspects of the production stage, uh, all of that is on you as the author, you as the rights holder. So um, that can be good if you have a particular vision in mind or if you're uh, capable of, of finding the sort of help that you want, people who are able to to do what you're looking for and you know provide uh, for your needs versus someone in-house at a publishing company. You know, you may or may not love your editor. You may or may not love your designer or so forth. Um, you don't have the opportunity really in that uh, context to change them. Whereas if you're publishing on your own, it's entirely at your discretion. Um, so, so that's quite nice. But again, you it is um, it is going to come at the cost of your investment, whether that's your time and energy or potentially uh, your financial investment as well as your time and energy. Yeah, and and unless you have a good feedback team, you have to be your own quality judge as well. There, if you're going on your own versus having any kind of team or a traditional publishing, so that can be really hard. I remember when I was starting out, I'm like, I don't. I don't know if this is good. You know, I don't know if people are going to consider this as as valuable because I don't because I don't know. What do you ha you don't have anything to base it off of? Right. Whereas if you have other people around you uh, that are more familiar, they can say, eh, they can kind of give you that that feedback. So I think that's a, maybe potentially a topic for another time. But that's just something to think about. Yep, definitely. All right, moving on. Self-publishing gives you access to Amazon ads. If you go with a publisher, this becomes tricky. So we've talked about Amazon ads before. Uh, short version is it can really help you to get in front of your target audience more effectively, uh, can really increase sales and conversions. And it can also give you some valuable backend information about who's buying your book, what sorts of things that the people who are finding your book and purchasing it are looking for. And that can be helpful in your own market research and in crafting future, future work that you're looking to come up with. Uh, if you are working with a publishing house, generally that's not going to be the case. Uh, thoughts on any of that, Jordan? Yeah, and we, I, I have I have seen this firsthand uh, from clients and from people that have requested feedback from me. Uh, yeah, if they get published by a traditional publisher, uh, you're they're doing their own, a lot of their own marketing. So when it comes time to, hey, can you help me with Amazon ads? Oh, actually, you know, it's a little bit harder because that's something uh, the publisher has to do from their end, especially especially yeah, if, if they did indeed upload uh, the book for you. Now, most likely that's probably gonna be the case. They're gonna upload it within their, within their account uh, and then put you uh, as the author. I'm not 100% sure exactly how that works, mm -hmm. but I just know it does get tricky at that point if you're not doing it yourself, because again, you don't have that control. You can't, you can't go, go and log into your KDP dashboard and see your book and then do that. that that's something that the publishing house normally will take care of for you. So it just limits access. Now, maybe I'm not, we're not saying that that publishing house wouldn't be able to use Amazon ads. It just, it just gets tricky uh, because they're going to have other books in there. They're going to, they're going to have to figure out a budget for you uh, and all that. So maybe I, it might be something where they're going to become more and more familiar with that. So that's potentially an option, uh, but it, it's not as easy just to do it yourself. Yep. Great, great insight. And yes, we've definitely had this experience with some, uh, some clients before who were published by outside parties and, and access was a little bit uh, <clears throat> difficult to obtain. And so there are just some more uh, logistical challenges to work around to yeah. make something like that happen. Yep. All right. Next up, it is possible to DIY most of the process and hustle to the finish line. Again, we've talked about this a handful of times. Uh, suffice it to say, if you do have some know-how and you know a little bit of elbow grease, you can get this book out there and really minimize the expense that's involved in producing this. Whereas if you're trying to publish 
uh, with some sort of publishing house. There are other steps involved. There may not be financial outlay, but but there are additional uh, gatekeepers and uh, points of access that you have to navigate. And um, yeah, if you if you are interested in self publishing a book that maybe other people aren't interested in uh, supporting, then uh, this can be the way to go. And this is an opportunity for you to uh, bootstrap it all the way to the hands of your audience. Yep. All right. So finally, the big one, you will receive a larger portion of the royalties when you are self publishing versus with the traditional publishing house. The, um, the, the typical royalty arrangement for Amazon Kindle is going to be between 35 and 70% based on a couple of factors. For a traditional publishing house, you might be looking at 5, five to 10%, maybe 15%, uh, depending on particulars of your contract and your arrangement. So from, from a strictly per unit sales cost, you are generally going to be better off self-publishing. Uh, any other thoughts on, on that, Jordan? No, I just think it's, you know, it's, it's the big one. It's the important one to consider. Are you going to be, and that this is where research into the pub, into the publishing house can, can be helpful and, and come into play. Are you going to be doing a lot of your own work? Uh, and if you're doing a lot of your own work for that five to 10%, it can be, it can be disheartening because marketing is hard, even at 70%, it's hard in general. Right. Uh, you can, you can make it work a little bit more uh, when you're thinking about that, but making it like a 5% cut work when you're thinking about Amazon ads or, or, or any ads for that matter, if you're going to jump into that, that can be really, uh, that could just make it even more tricky. Yeah. And I'll say just on that note, when it comes to the the publishing house, when we were publishing titles in house, there there ended up being almost a um, this negative incentive that we had because of the arrangement that we created. It was quite favorable for the authors. I believe it was a 70-30 split in which uh, we as publisher got thirty percent and they got seventy percent. Mm -hmm. But that also meant that when it came to um, investment or uh, money spent on on projects or or things that would just take time for for us to do to help generate additional sales. Uh, if we're only getting 30% of that, it's a lot harder to uh, justify, you know, maybe mm -hmm. an hour's worth of time or multiple hours worth of time if it's going to result in, you know, an extra uh, extra few sales versus if you have uh, full control over that, if you're getting 100% of the proceeds on your own or at least 100% of uh, the royalty dispersed, then you have the opportunity to um, to take some chances to to make some uh, make some investments there and see how it pans out. A publishing house, they might say, "Hey, look, we're not you know like maybe you think that's going to work, but uh, we don't think so." And and sorry, you know, it's not worth our our time. Uh, even if you're interested in doing it yourself, you might even say, "Hey, well, I'll I'll invest my money, I'll put it out there." But if you're only getting you know five or ten percent of the royalties, um, it's harder for you to justify that sort of expense as well, even if it would help you in terms of absolute numbers of, of audience members reached and, and sales. Um, so that's just something to, to consider. You know, the, the royalty arrangement um, can vary depending on the publishing house, but it will, um, you know, uh, have an impact in in how profitable it is to reinvest in, uh, in getting your book into an, uh, the hands of a larger audience. Yeah, that's good. Those are really good questions to consider. I like that. Yeah. All right, moving on, a brief look at traditional mm -hmm. publishing pros and cons. Is it a better avenue for you? First up, book proposals and query letters take time and they might lead to nothing, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on that, Jordan? Yeah, I think, you know, if it, if 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 you're of the of the mind, hey, I'm going to I'm I want to get a book traditionally published, then working on book proposals and query letters and getting that some experience with that can be really good. Uh, but it's just something to consider, hey, do I want to do I want to spend time on that when uh, there are a lot of upsides to self-publishing. I think that it's, we're going to talk about, or maybe we maybe we aren't, aren't going to talk about stigma or anything like that. But I think self-publishing used to have a lot more of a negative stigma to it. I don't think it does as much anymore. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, we, we've highlighted some of the super positives that I think still exist. Uh, it's not something to just brush aside. I think it's definitely a you know it's definitely an option to consider. Uh, and you, so that being said, you do have to consider your time going into the query letters and, and all the stuff that you're going to be doing uh, to try to get someone to approve your book. Yeah, definitely. It, it, you know, the the question, if you're totally new to this, uh, the, the question of, well, how do I spend my limited amounts of time and energy yeah. on doing something? You know, if you're going to have to learn s several new processes anyway, you know, whether that's putting together proposals and query letters and, and kind of going through those hoops, 
or um, learning how to do basic formatting or design or, or learn the basics of self-publishing, um, maybe you might think, well, Chucks, it might be worth it to, to just learn the self-publishing side of it, you know, rather than having to, to teach yourself uh, something new that may not pan out. At least if you teach yourself, you know, how to get the book up there and out there, you can uh, let the audience determine for you whether it was a worthwhile project rather than a publishing house agent or gatekeeper. Yep. All right. Uh, next one. It is a time consuming process overall. And that I can certainly attest to. I I've been in contact with authors. You know, sometimes it takes 18 months uh, between the time that the manuscript is complete until it's actually available in the hands of an audience versus, you know, many self-publishing authors, folks who work with us, it tends to be a, a a bit of a more involved process. We say uh, between 12 and, and 16 weeks or 18 weeks, somewhere around there. Uh, however, you know, in, in some cases, if you're if you have your process done and polished and, and you're doing it all in house, I mean, you can have your book out there uh, in days. And uh, and that can be really important when it comes to a topic that's timely or something that you just want to test and see if there is audience uh, an audience out there for it. Um, publishing houses, you know, for, for some good reasons, they just have a longer um, <clears throat> incubation period, let's say, uh, bef between when the book is complete and when it's going to be available for the public. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. And I just thought of something, Rob, that I think is worth mentioning. I know we're going a little bit over our, you know, our 30 minute target, but I think it's worth mentioning just thinking about, you know, these, especially when you're first starting, I don't think it has to be a mutually exclusive uh, or decision you make right off the bat. I was just thinking, you know, the idea of writing a book proposal and doing a query letter and getting it out there can be really, could be really helpful in determining your audience, figuring out what your book is offering. Uh, you know, that letter could turn eventually turn into a sales copy. Maybe, you, maybe it helps you think of something. I actually really want to add this to the book, you know, when you did some research on what other books are offering. So I don't think it has to be completely wasted effort. I think whenever you're doing something like that, you're, you're getting some practice in. I like to look at things like that, you know, unless it's, unless it's something totally out of left field and isn't going to augment what I'm doing at all. Uh, I could, I could use that and I could apply that to something else that I'm, I'm working at too. Uh, and yeah, if, if you get to the point where, you know, no one's responding, yeah, jump in, do some, um, d you know, decide and do self publishing uh, at that point. But yeah, it doesn't have to be a uh, mutually, mutually exclusive um, concept or plan, I don't think. Yeah, I think that's a good point too. And we've uh, maybe mentioned before, there are instances of people who are self-published who end up getting traditionally published. And so, you know, putting that mm -hmm. sort of yeah. time and energy into creating a, a good, high quality self-published book uh, can be really helpful. In fact, one of our one of our authors, um, uh, Steve Bernstein, has a, a book that was picked up by a publishing house and um, he had self-published and we had helped him with uh, the creation of it. And one of the things that the uh, publishing house said was the professional quality that um, that we were able to, to offer uh, gave them additional confidence in his story. They That was what got him on their radar and uh, eventually opened the way for them to create this um, uh, this publishing house arrangement. So uh, there are there are opportun opportunities. So like you said, it's not mutually exclusive. There are overlap. Um, there are overlap potentials there. Mm -hmm. All right. So moving yeah, on. Absolutely. We have gatekeepers who might lock you out. We've mentioned them before. You have to prove to somebody that your book is worth publishing. If you're going through a publishing house, they have their good reasons for it. But uh, it does mean that if you have something a little bit off the beaten path or that you haven't quite uh, persuaded people yet, uh, then you may be locked out, unfortunately, uh, even if the audience is eventually going to to love the material. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if you don't want that sort of gatekeeper experience, then self-publishing could be a better option for you. Yep. All right. Uh, less competition if you are selected. So this is one of the pros. There are far fewer traditionally published books than there are self-published books out there. Uh, and as much as there may be some inefficiencies in the uh, the establish or the operation of a large publishing house, uh, there, there are a lot of resources there and there are a lot of advantages that they can bring to, to the table. You know, they have professionals who are good at their job, whose full-time occupation is, you know, putting together uh, book interiors and book covers and editing and uh, creating audiobooks and all of these other elements of production. And so you have um, you have a high quality team behind you because they're only publishing 
you know, uh, a dozen, several dozen, several hundred books a year instead of, you know, Amazon on the Amazon marketplace, you know, thousands, uh, thousands a week. Yeah. So it's less confidence, but then it's also, or it's less competition, uh, but it's also a confidence booster that can be huge if you're, maybe your book isn't done yet, or, you know, you, you just got the query letter written and they're like, Hey, actually we want this. Uh, huge as far as getting the book done, some motivation for you. Hey, you know, someone that likes books and is a gatekeeper said yes to my project. That could right. be that could be thrilling and that can be helpful. Uh, and you know, that that could be what just what you need to get something done. So I think that's a that's definitely a pro there. Yep, absolutely. And then piggybacking onto that, our next comment here: uh, backing by a publisher can mean extended reach. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, again, you have access to other markets potentially, uh, and and other audience uh, audience members. There are some people out there who may not be interested in buying something self published. They might say, "Hey, listen, if if it's just you know uh, Joe author down the street putting their book together, nah, probably not going to take a chance on it." But if you know Hackett or you know Penguin Books or whoever has uh, has produced, they say, "Okay, you know it's it's past my minimum quality threshold. I'm willing to look at it." Uh, so again, it just can mean some additional reach. It may also mean uh, availability in some other markets outside of Amazon, uh, which which can be valuable. Yeah, you have to have a hard skin uh, or thick skin as a, as a self-publisher, especially if you get negative early feedback, which I've received on on some of my books. You know, you know, the first for whatever reason, the first couple of people I reach out to are like, eh, I'm not a fan of this. Uh, and that always seems to strike me. And then I get then I do get the good people that come in. Uh, but that, that can be tough to deal with, especially if it's, you know, the first. So I think having having something like that extended reach, it just gives you that 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 confidence boost mm -hmm. uh, that can just I know I'm going back to that, but I think it's just really important. And it really does relate to those because, you know, you think about, yeah, they have extended reach. Oh, OK, you know, maybe the competition's a little bit less now because I got my foot in the door uh, right. as opposed to am I am I even knocking on the right door with self-publishing? Mm -hmm. Like Sometimes you don't know. And it's right. hard. Right. Right. Uh, moving on you will most likely have to do your own marketing, which can be painful considering that your royalties are typically a lot less than with self-publishing. We covered that earlier. Yep. Uh, so just in general, you know, uh, people think, I, this is something I, I do want to impress upon folks. People think that if you, you're published by a traditional publishing house, that they're going to be doing all the marketing and you're really just going to have to kind of sit back and maybe show up for an interview or two uh, every now and then. But that really isn't the case. They expect that you have an audience. They expect that you're going to be promoting actively to that audience. They expect that you're going to be finding new opportunities on your own to get your book out there. And in fact, if they give you a royalty or an advance on your royalties and things don't pan out uh, based on all of that uh the audience that you've brought and and what they can sort of hope to uh, to get back in terms of sales, then you're uh, you're responsible in many cases for that advance for the you know you have to return whatever it is that you didn't earn. So you really are going to be expected to put together um, a lot of the marketing uh, sort of plan and and um, sort of hustle. So keep that in mind. People think you know I'm going to self published and there's nobody that's going to promote it for me. Well, in some cases, when you traditionally publish, no one's really going to promote it for you either. So um, you really do have to be your own best advocate when it comes to putting any any sort of content out in the world. Um, and unfortunately, uh, long gone are the days where in this publishing house would would you know move mountains on behalf of each of their authors. They just don't have the resources or willingness to do that these days. Yeah, and very, very good note, Rob. I think that's just important. Yeah, moving on. You have less control over the content and quality, et cetera. So again, you know, you have the opportunity to uh, make all those decisions yourself. If you don't like the editorial decisions or the design decisions being made by your publishing house, and you have a contract and you're holding to them, if they retain, you know, final rights to to discretion on some of that, you're kind of out of luck. If you're publishing it on your own, it is going to be at your discretion. Kind of a trade-off, you you would think and hope generally that the publishing house would, because they have a, a shared interest in it, because they have a team of professionals who are used to doing these sorts of things, that the quality is going to be there and and that they probably know what they're doing. But at the same time, uh, you know, you might have a very distinct vision and and it might be uh, not what they're picturing, even though it might do very well, might do even better. And when you cede control to a publishing house, then um, then they have control. And that's sort of the situation that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And finally, concluding thoughts. So there, I would say there are still many advantages to self-publishing on Amazon in 2020, but just know <laughs> what you're signing up for. And uh, 
what do you think? You know, if yep. you're in the audience, if you've done this before, if you're navigating this, uh, is pub Amazon publishing worth it? Should you just go on your own website? Should you forgo creating a book altogether? Are, are there other alternatives or options out there mm -hmm. that you're thinking about? We'd love to hear about them and, and happy to, to share some thoughts or experience or just learn about, uh, about different options that people are considering. Uh, anything else that you wanted to share, Jordan? Nope, that's all I got. Good stuff. All right. Yeah, excellent. Well, thanks everybody for checking us out and uh, feel free to leave some comments or questions down below. We're always happy to answer as best we can and we will look forward to seeing everybody next week for uh, live stream number 49. Have a good evening. See you guys.